Today we are going to do some observational drawing with real life pumpkins in order to practice creating form. In art, we use observational drawing when we're looking at something in person. We can either do still life, which is what we're going to do today, where we look at an object that's not alive. So uh, that would be like our pumpkins, or if we set up um, like a cup, or maybe your favorite toy in front of you. We can also do um, live drawing, which is when we have like an animal in front of us that we're trying to draw, or a human being sitting in front of us drawing. And those two ways are called observational drawing. We're gonna practice form today. And in form, we want our object to look three-dimensional. The easiest way to do that is through adding what we talked about last week, value. And we're gonna do that with a material called oil pastels. So it's very important that you got your hand sanitizer as you came in the door. We'll get our hand sanitizer one more time before we all touch our oil pastels. They have this neat little wrapper on them, so that should hopefully um, keep most of the oil pastel off of your hands. At the very end though, we will use our finger that we don't draw with to kind of uh, rub the oil pastel to create that form and value. And Miss Lechner will give you a wipe to clean off your fingers. All right, who is ready to start drawing some still life pumpkins? When we do our still life objects, we are looking at our object in real life. So we are doing a realistic drawing with our pumpkins here. This here is a pumpkin um, candy dish. And as you can see, it does have some similar characteristics of how it looks in real life with the sections and the bumps on it. It just makes it all even and the same size when if you look at your pumpkins on your table, that's not necessarily how pumpkins are in real life. However, we can see those bumps and sections. We can see the stem part for sure. And then what we can also see on a lot of our pumpkins is a little bit of a variation in color. And so that variation in color just adds to our interest um, with our pumpkins. So we are gonna try to make a realistic pumpkin, not a make-believe pumpkin or a cartoon pumpkin today. And we're gonna draw first with our pencil while we are looking at our pumpkin. So I'm looking here at my pumpkin and I can do this a couple of different ways. I think probably the easiest way though is to look at the contour line and the contour line is the outline of an object. So we can kind of see this pumpkin here is circular in shape, but it is not smooth all the way around. It's like there's a section here and a section here and a section here all the way around. So what I'm going to do to start my realistic drawing of my pumpkin is start with that contour line. Now, your neighbor's pumpkin angle may be different than yours because of where they're sitting at the table. Their pumpkin angle may be like this. Do you see how that changes depending on where you're sitting? And then if you're sitting on this side, it changes even more. So your pumpkin picture is not going to necessarily look exactly like your neighbor's this week. And it definitely probably won't look like Miss Lechner's because you might not have the same pumpkin that she has. I'm gonna to go to my paper now and I'm going to lightly, while I'm still looking at my pumpkin, real lightly with my pencil, start drawing that contour line of the outside of the pumpkin. So you can see I'm drawing lightly I'm just using a straight line right now. I am trying to make a little bit of the bumps in, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm gonna get that here in a little bit when I start adding my color. Now I'm gonna look up here at my stem and I see that it makes almost kind of like an upside down J shape. So I'm gonna go back here to my 
pumpkin and draw that upside down J shape or a hook shape maybe. Like if you have a hook at the end of your umbrella to hang up or a coat hook for your backpack or coat to sit on. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to just lightly with my pencil see where I can see those sections and draw those in really lightly here on my pumpkin. And I'm kind of curving my line a little bit to go ahead and start adding that form. I'm not just drawing a straight line. I'm curving it a little bit because the pumpkins are curved. Okay, I think I need one more right here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We're going to switch to our oil pastels now. And we're going to start with our orange. And if you remember when we talked about value last week, value was created with our dark and and light variations of a color. Remember we called that a gradient scale. We got to practice value using crayons and so we're going to use a similar coloring technique with the oil pastels this week. If we look here you can naturally see different spots on our pumpkin where it is darker. Like right here, right away I can see that's a dark colored orange and this is lighter. So what I'm going to do right now with my oil pastel is I'm going to fill in all my dark spaces. I am not outlining my drawing all in orange. Instead, I'm just only coloring in where I see the dark orange part on my pumpkins. So you can do that now with your orange oil pastel. I've now colored in the dark part of the orange on my pumpkin. Now the pumpkin gets a little bit lighter towards the top. So the way that I'm going to show that value is I'm just going to color just a little bit of yellow in my spaces that I have. And it doesn't have to be 100% filled in like we do with crayons because you're going to see in a minute what we're going to do to smooth everything out. And then of course my lightest part, I'm actually going to add some white. Now some of your pumpkins may be uh, green. There's a couple of green pumpkins there, so you might have to use more green than orange. This pumpkin here that I'm using has some green spots, so the green spots are a little darker in places, so I'm just going to add some green over the top. And then there was kind of a little bit of a yellow green on the side as I got towards the lighter part. So I'm just going to add that in. Now what I do with my finger is I'm going to smooth my finger over my paper, but I'm going to go from the light to the dark. So I just go like this and drag my finger down. I just keep rubbing and as you can see it's smoothing things out and filling my color in. So I'm going to keep doing that on each section of my pumpkin and then we will wrap up finishing our still life Finish pumpkin. My, smearing each section of my pumpkin now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in places that I might need to smear a little more with my finger and then around the bottom, like you can see on your table, there's a shadow created. So my shadow looks like this shape. So I'm going to kind of spread my finger out a little bit to start making a shadow here. And then over here on this side, a little bit. So 
I'm just dragging it out a little bit. What I'm gonna do now is go back in with my orange and the places I want really dark, I'm just gonna color back over the top again and create a second layer of orange. So I definitely want it dark here. I might go back in where those ridges were and just kind of go back over it. Add another layer here to define it a little better. And then again, take my finger and do some more smearing. So smear again, remember top to bottom, because if we go the other way, it's gonna make our value up here get messed up and will be darker. So we want the dark at the bottom. And then remember, we're gonna smear out for our shadow. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna, one last thing is I wanna make my value of my white up here, but I don't want it to be necessarily a true white. So I'm gonna add a little more white there and then kind of blend it and smear it into the orange and the yellow so I get that lighter value. And now the last thing I'm gonna do on my stem is I'm gonna take my brown and outline my stem. And looking at my stem, it's a little yellow green here at the bottom. So now I'm gonna take my finger and do the same kind of smear thing that I did before to get a light tan color. And then once I get that done to add the details, just kind of go back over the stem that way. And then again, down here where the shadow is, I'm just gonna color just a little bit of brown. And just smear it along the bottom here. Maybe color a little bit more here. Again, our shadow kind of makes a circle on the table if you look really closely because that's the shape our pumpkin is. Okay. So I feel pretty good about this. It's okay if your paper got a little messy down here. That's all right. This is our first time to really use oil pastels in art this year. So if it got a little messy, that's okay. With a little... Um, pieces of oil pastel up rolling here from your paper. You just want to kind of leave it alone. You don't want to rub over it like this or smear it because that's what's going to cause your smears down here. So you just kind of want to leave it like it is. You want to, of course, we're going to sign our work. So I'm going to write Miss Lechner here now that we are all done. And then I'm going to put 2020 by my pumpkin. And that is how we're gonna create form by using value and oil pastels for our pumpkins. I hope you enjoyed this project and I look forward to seeing your pumpkins you make.